Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at part three of the General Electric 14 inch metal black and white tabletop. In the last video we yanked this chassis out of the donor as this one's in far better condition. And we're going to go through the process of restoring this one. And with any good restoration, the most important place to start is the power supply. Now since this is a line operated set, we have a rectifier which is this big scary looking thing here. And that's gonna go through a doubler system. Uh, here's doubler can number one, and then the other half is in that can there. Um, and then it goes through various sets of filters. Uh, there's a big fat set of dropping resistors back here, and it distributes various uh, voltages throughout the set where needed. Once we get that aspect of everything done, then we can work on the nightmare of pulling these boards and replacing all the paper wax caps and stuff like that. And these boards suck. They're not fun. This one's in much better shape. Uh, the other one had signs of brittle boards and corrosion and rust and just things that I wouldn't want to see on an older TV. And this down here is your main line fuse. So if the set ever stops working, you have to dig all this out just to get to that and it may be that i change that location to somewhere a little more prominent in the back of the chassis uh, but that's for later so right now what we need to do is take down a list of capacitors that we will need and figure out how to implement them because we have very limited space um, i'm thinking <clears throat> very likely a terminal strip with uh, some 1 in 5408 uh, diode here Maybe the first half of the doubler here, uh, since it's going right there, and then the second half um, of the cans will probably be a terminal strip with more values there. But yeah, we have to take all this out first and uh, figure out where all these wires go. I have a schematic diagram, so I'm not completely lost, but I'm still going to map it out because that's just what I do. That helps me, and it prevents me from making mistakes because uh, my memory's not all that great. So anyways, um, let's get some paper, let's yank those cans, and figure out what we're going to do next. Okay, so we drew out some things here. This one's pretty simple. It's just a you know, single doubler can, uh, which is just 300 microfarad to 160. Don't have that. I may have to order that. The second one is a little more complicated. And what you can see here is uh, the first section, 100 at 450. It's got one red wire to the yoke, one uh, red and white wire to the left side of the circuit board, uh, third red to the CRT, four fat red to the left side of the HV cage. Uh, second section there, I didn't write down the value yet. Uh, red to the tuner, red to the HV cage, red to the right side board. And finally, the third value which is just a single orange lead. And... They certainly like their red wires, just lots of red wires, so that's nice. It makes it really easy, which is, again, why you write this stuff down, because if you don't, you're going to go red wire, red wire, red wire. Where does the red wire go? Oh my gosh, red wires, more red wires. Where do they go? Holy crap. And then you got to track it down on the schematic, which is going to take you some time. So this saves a little bit of time. As far as that second value of can, uh, it's hard to see here. <clears throat> but that looks like a 200 at 160. So we'll say 220 at 160. These are all things I'm going to have to order. No biggie. Uh, but we can at least set up the terminal strips. And we can set up the thing for the bridge rectifier there. Now when you add the bridge rectifier, usually the dropping resistor in front of it has to increase in value somewhat. So we'll figure that out. Uh, and then once we get everything situated in here... And nice and neat and pretty. Um, I'm probably going to have to dismount the tuner in order to mount the terminal strips. I could just mount them on the bottom, or I could just get hayseed cans, but that costs money, lots of money. And you obviously can't use a adapter cap here because there's nothing to you know mount it to yet. 
So I'm probably just going to end up grinding these off and then mounting terminal strips here for the caps and another one here for the rectifier. And then we'll wire everything up and see how it looks. Okay, so I've got our cans removed. And I even had to group them together and mark them so that I knew which ones were which. I mean, granted, this is easy because it's the only one wire. Then we have our ground and a little capacitor that ties to the uh, second of three leads, the square lead there. And we need to get this guy out. So we need to uh, desolder... <clears throat> excuse me, we need to desolder this guy, cut this guy. Uh, and then we'll replace him with a terminal strip. So let me uh, get the camera set up here and we'll remove this guy. I know everybody likes to watch this boring stuff, so we're going to do some boring stuff today, which is basically removing parts and then implementing new ones. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to have to do to change the dropping resistor to an appropriate value. That's what the SAMS is for. The SAMS tells us what the voltages are supposed to be, and we adjust that based on what the SAMS tells us. Got to get all this old solder out of here, and then we can disconnect this resistor. you're not going to cooperate, are you? And remove that guy. The yellow lead we can just cut, and the red lead here we can just cut. We know those are the positive side only, and they go wherever they go. <clears throat> I think this is a choke over here. That's what it'll run through. And then one of these should get this loose. These things are really cool to look at, but you want this to be reliable, not cool looking, especially if it's confined in an area where no one's ever going to see it. So that's where that comes into play. And we're probably going to have to go inside the high voltage cage and remove the rest of that because I'm going to mount a terminal strip there. Yeah, so that's fixed from the inside. So we'll have to see what's involved in getting that off. So let me clip the chassis around here. And that is our marvelous piece of engineering there. You can see that they've wedged it in here. There's no way to turn that nut. So we're just going to grab a hold of this thing with some vice grips and unscrew it until the nut falls out of place. And then put something in there a little more appropriate. And one thing I don't like about these sets is that General Electric is really cheap. And they cut a lot of corners that they really... I mean, if they had just spent a little bit of extra effort, but rarely do they. So I'm just going to grip this here nice and tight. Rock it loose. And then we can turn it, hopefully. Now we need some more vice grip there. at least loose. And of course I bet you that nut on the other side is starting to turn now. Sure is. And if I try to hold this 
and we discover that the threads are messed up. That's no surprise. Let's brace it with something. I'm just going to shove a screwdriver between the side of the nut and the chassis. And then turn this some more. I think our threads might be stripped. Because it's a turning, but it ain't coming out. That's nice. There, yeah, there we go. Come on out. All right, so that's out of there. This is just one of many reasons why I'm not fond of GE stuff is because they're just very, very cheap. Not well put together. So now that we have this big hole, there's the nut. All right. So let me get a terminal strip and we'll mount that there with a little more accessible hardware. Okay, so we have our terminal strip. Let me get some hardware out. screw is going to go from behind since I can get a screwdriver in here and so we'll brace it behind here and get an appropriate length screwdriver so this one's like super long. And then I'll put the terminal strip on the other side. I neglected to pull out the correct retaining nut, so bear with me a second. Okay, that's coming together pretty good. And I'm just holding the nut and tightening it down. I know you can't see a whole lot there, but I can't really position the camera appropriately, so. But here's what it looks like so far. We got this here. And let's see if I can tighten that down just a little bit more. snug there okay so what we'll do here is we'll mount our our diode out of curiosity I'm just gonna measure this current resistor and see what it is ohms so that's just a surge resistor that doesn't really drop any voltage so we'll just hook that one up and then worry about the dropping voltages after the rectifier later when we see it uh, and this will be a large enough area that we can add uh, the dropping resistor to it haven't figured out what that's going to be yet but probably in the neighborhood of about 82 to 100 ohms to get the voltage right. It's just my my guess. I really don't know yet. So, anyways, let's grab a diode and solder it in here. And here it is. This is just kind of a, a mock-up right now. 
I had to extend that lead obviously because it wasn't quite reaching that. Now uh, I have to look through options as far as that 300 plus microfarad at 160 volt because I don't think it's going to fit in this space. So I'm going to look and see if I can find one close to that bracket and reuse the bracket there. But this at least gives me enough room to mess around if I want to add a dropping resistor or something. So let's see what capacitors options there are for the big 330 microfarad. But at least for now, the, uh, the rectifier is mounted and that terminal strip is mounted. And I'll worry about the other stuff as I uh, figure out what's going to go in their place. So this is what I'm looking at right now for that 300 microfarad, and it's just a little over 1.18 uh, 1 inches in diameter. So I'll be able to squeeze it into the uh, bracket there and just reinforce it so it doesn't go anywhere. So I don't have to worry about chopping off that bottom bracket, and we just need to worry about the top one. And the other values are just kind of, you know, whatever, not a big deal. But this one... Uh, I was really concerned about it because of space constraints, and this will make things a lot easier. It's a 5,000 hour cap at 105 degrees Celsius, so it's also a little bit larger than the original 470 microfarad versus 300. That's not going to hurt anything. In fact, it's probably going to make it run a little bit better. So we're just going to add this one in, add the others, and then while we're waiting for that to get here, we can remove the secondary bracket and work on installing the other caps that are going to take up the place. So now what we have to do is figure out how to easily remove this. Uh, and I think that the term easily really doesn't correspond here because, well, it just doesn't. Because in order to get to that rivet, we have to remove the tuner. And in order to remove the tuner, we have to remove this L bracket here. And then we have to unbolt the tuner here. And then once the tuner is free, there's more screws underneath that hold this bracket in place so that we can get to the underside and um, bust out that old rivet. Um, because no matter what happens, even if you just saw off the old rivet, where are you going to mount the new one to? Hmm? Where's the new one going to go? You'd have to get to the other side anyway. So regardless, the tuner has to come out. And I don't like that, but... That's realistically how it is. Sigh. Yeah, so basically, to facilitate this removal, we have to come in here, uh, loosen this bracket, and this fun. I don't think so. You just think that, you know, maybe they could care a little bit about assembling these. These were just done on the cheap. And then we got to remove these. And we can get our tuner loose. Yep, tuner comes loose now. But I'm on leads, so I don't really have enough to get it out of the way. That's about my restraint of movement there. Let's see if I can see the old rivet. It should be... It's right in there. Let's rotate things a bit. Maybe a little, you can see it a little better. That's the guy up in there. You can't really see it. It's dark. Come on. Yeah, that guy up in there. He has to get ground off. And then we're going to uh, put another terminal strip in there. So let me get the Dremel tool and the cutoff and we'll grind that off and then we'll install another terminal strip and wire everything up. 
Yeah, just to warn you all, this is where the loud noise is coming to play, so you might want to turn your volume down at this point. And so with the head of that rivet gone, you should be able to come on here on the back side of this. Pop this guy up. I can get a screwdriver in there to pry. Perhaps not enough of that head is removed yet. I still see a little nubbin here on the side. Loud noises! There's a roll bracket. And we'll just do the same thing. Which is get some hardware. Feed it through the hole. And good, that's not going to stick up enough that it's going to mess with our tuner displacement there. That's good. I don't have to figure that one out or grind the head of the screw off. I hate it when that happens. Okay, let me run and get another terminal strip real quick. And then I'm going to hold this. Whilst I install the second terminal strip, and I think I have one of the cap values in stock, so I can at least do that much. And let's see here. Just going to put a screwdriver in there, turn that a bit, at least snug it down, and we can worry about tightening it down. And let me find the little nut driver. Get this aligned the way I want it, and then we'll tighten that down. Great. Now we can put our tuner back. Yep, and it doesn't interfere with lining up on the tuner either, which is wonderful. That means that I don't have to grind off the head of that mounting screw I just used or any fancy stuff like that. It's just going to fit in there. Okie dokie, let's tighten these down, then we'll put our little bell brackety looking thing back in there.
question is, is will I actually be able to get these two lined up at the right spot? Yeah, the answer is probably no. So we're going to just run a screw through it and hope for the best. I know I get bitchy about these sets because I don't personally like them. They really didn't engineer them very well. And you ask, okay, well, what do you like working on? Mm. I gotta say, it's a toss up between Zenith and Motorola. Older Motorola tube chassis, the old Zenith tube chassis, they're, they're pretty nice. They're not very difficult to work on. They don't require anything weird. Okay. Alright, so now, you can see here we got a nice terminal strip which we can use to mount our capacitors and stuff too. So that's going to work out pretty nice. And then that other big fat capacitor, when it comes here, we should be able to attach everything and make this happy. Uh, for right now, let's at least get the value of capacitor that I have in stock, which I think is the 100 at 450 and the 47 at 450. And let's get them in here. And uh, then all we have to do is wait for the other two caps to show up. And then, then we can get this thing kind of squared away. Uh, it's not slated to be here for at least a week. And I know it's times, delay times, yeah, words. Delivery times have been slow lately uh, for whatever reasons. So I think for this episode, we'll finish wiring up the terminal strip, install the caps that I have. The small values are going to creep up up here, so the big values have room down here to sit. And then the first cap is going to fit in this bracket here, which should work out okay. And then uh, we can work on tweaking the high voltage and all that noise. All right, let's get our two cap values. All right, so skip ahead a little bit because I missed the first couple minutes. The camera did not want to start recording, but 100 microfarad, which is the first value in the can, it's going to get shoved up inside of here. And I haven't wired it up yet. Uh, I'm just going to hold it there with the positive since there's going to be more negative leads that go up inside of there. Because we have this value here, we have this value here, which are going to lay down here on the bottom, and then we have a small value up here. And I'm going to lay a little bit of heat shrink uh, on the leads that extend a little bit, so there's no possibility of arc over. So let me get some heat shrink real quick. And we'll just attach this. Now I've got heat shrunk leads there, which is going to be fun trying to shove this up into the cavity. They don't give you a whole lot of space to work with, which I'm not thrilled about, but... Short of doing a lot of re-engineering, there's not a whole lot I can do. Nice tight fit up in here. And of course my heat shrink pops off. I'll have to get that back up there in a minute. I'll work on the negative lead first since that's going to... I 
that's going to sit there like that. And then we'll get the positive lead up in here. Because that's going to sit over here like this. But yeah, that's all fun, isn't it? And then I'll just solder this guy in place. Cut off the excess when we're done. I didn't solder the negatives because there's still another cap or two to shove into that hole, depending on how all this goes. But yeah, that's that's where we're at at the moment. And like I said, the big 220 volt is probably going to, or 220 microfarad, 160 volts, probably going to sit right about here. And then the uh, 330 microfarad, that's going to sit right there. As far as this 47 microfarad with just a single orange lead, I'm just going to trim this, strip it, and attach it right now. Since that's the one cap I know really isn't going to be movable or go anywhere. It's just so crammed in here, man. It's like working on one of those early 1940s five tube radios that's in about a eight inch wide by five inch tall by five inch deep package it really had no intention of easy access it's what you could have called a throwaway then except nobody threw anything away everybody was into fixing things all right, so that leads in there. Yeah, this is just excess. I'll loop that around there just so it doesn't go anywhere. We'll cut off this, so I won't make this here. All right, and this is to the big cap, which then gets linked over to the rectifier. And let's see here. It's a three-section can. So actually, these set of three here are going to go to the 100. The second set to here. Maybe I should just solder that in while I have the opportunity before the cap gets here. Assuming they'll all reach. If not, I'll have to make an extension. Yeah, these are fun. Let's unbundle these. And let's see if my leads will reach before I get too excited. Okay, so we got one. One that's going to reach for sure. Two that's going to reach for sure. Three that's going to reach for sure. Okay, and then we have this capacitor which also solders to that lead there. Anti oscillation, I assume. And that's going to fit there. So all these are going to fit just fine. So we have one, two, where's the third one? I just had it. Where did he go? Oh, it's dangling down there. Okay. So, let's strip some of this off. Strip some of this off. 
put them all in and solder them. This one I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to make a lead extension because it just doesn't get close enough, but that's not difficult. It's just something you got to do. So let me put this down to where I can grab it. So that's that lead there. There's lead number two. And finally, lead number three. Let me get stuff out of the way here so I can get the soldering iron in there and then we'll solder this all up. keep knocking the camera but oh well stuff just gets in my way sometimes make sure the solder gets through all the leads and the holes yep all right so then when the 220 comes um, that can go there and then I need to make a lead extension for this because obviously that's not going to fit there Let's go ahead and make that happen. And since these are all of a heavy gauge, or actually, I take that back, these are all of a light gauge, we're just going to combine them all into a big, bigger heavy gauge wire and heat shrink it down. It's running a short distance, so I'm not really concerned about it. Strip all these guys off. And then what we'll do is we'll twist them all together. Okie dokie. And we'll get a piece of 14 gauge. I don't know if you guys can see that there, but well, anyways, we got a piece of 14 gauge. And we're going to wrap this around our bundle and then we'll solder it. And then we'll heat shrink that mess. And then we'll run the lead over here and solder it in place. And that should cover that setup bundle there. Uh, yep, about maybe three inches just to have a little bit of excess server slack. Let me grab a piece of shrink tubing, a little more appropriately sized. And then I'm just going to heat it up with the butt of the soldering iron to shrink it down enough. We can finalize that later. I just need it in place enough to get it installed. And this will take the stresses off this. We'll strip this. Keep knocking the camera, it's just right in front of me there. And then we'll feed this down with a hundred microfarad line there, assuming it'll cooperate with me. And then solder it into place. And 
then for now we're just waiting on the big caps and once they're in we can just solder them all up I'm just going to cut the excess off here so it doesn't have a chance of arcing out so that takes the stress off these leads puts that there we still have this which was grounded to one of the cans uh, so we'll need to probably make that a common chassis ground uh, not a big deal because I don't think that that's the same potential if I just ohm it out here yeah it's, it's floating this floats and this was attached to a can which was grounded via these things so we got to make sure that that's a ground ground but it's coming along that's the good thing it's coming along and i can't really do much more until the remaining two caps get here i thought i would have those values but i don't but you can see that those values of caps are tucked nicely away in here we've got our terminal strip which is easy to access voltage test points uh, we can add a dropping resistor here if we need to change the voltage if it's too high. Uh, and then once our caps come in and we get all that figured out, then our power supply will be done. Uh, and then we can move on to other stuff. So, yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the uh, repair process. This has been part three. Stay tuned for part four. When we get the caps in, we'll finish the power supply and tinker around a bit and see if we can... Uh, get the power supply dialed in and then work on the rest of the machine.